So let's get on to new products. It's product time. Yeah, we have some new products this week. We'll get some new products this week. We've got eggs. Eggs. <laughs> uh, well, also uh, Christmas decorations. Yeah. Yeah, we upgraded the egg bot. Uh, we used to carry the egg bot classic, and then um, Lenore even went outside. She's like, you know, people really like the deluxe kit more, and I was like, really? Okay. So now we carry um, the deluxe kit instead, and it's a little more expensive, but it comes with more stuff. It has like an egg coupler. Um, it has um, these really nice brass um, turny things, and it has a different, uh, like an engraver holder. I'm trying to remember exactly what it has, but if you check out the product page for the Eggbot, um, it does describe what comes in uh, the new Deluxe Eggbot kit. Okay, next up, um, we're very and pleased. Ornament Bot kit. Uh, we're very pleased about this. This has been a long time coming. We have Open Beam. Yay. What is Open Beam, Lady Ada? Open Beam is um, a 15 by 15 millimeter aluminum extrusion kit. And um, it has some uh, cool stuff about it. I, I will be carrying more different types of extrusion, but I want to start out with this. This is a good uh, intro, introductory, introductory level um, sort of robotics and building and DIY uh, extrusion. So the cool thing about this extrusion is, first off, it has a little open source hardware logo in it. You can kind of see. Oh, look at that. Um, but most it's a nice logo. That's a nice logo you designed. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't design the open source uh, uh, hardware logo. Well, it's actually the OSI logo. Yeah, the OSI logo, maybe. Um, so most uh, <laughs> like most extrusions, um, and you need special hex nuts for, or like special like T nuts, what they're called. But this has a, a really large gap, specifically so that you can slide a hex nut in. So you can use low cost connectors. Like you don't have to get special parts. You just use like these are like M2 or M3 or something um, screws. So screws and hex nut, I think you can probably maybe even use 440s. I don't know, I have to check that out. But it does, this pack does come with 100 of each. And it also comes with these really neat um, plates. And so you can bolt these plates together. And let's go through all the different plates. There's, um, you get like a whole mess load of these T plates. And so you can make T shapes. And then um, you have a lot of angle plates, like tons of angle plates, you get like 25 angle plates. So you get angle plates and T plates. And this allows you to create all sorts of shapes. And then you also get a big assortment of um, sizes of the pre-cut extrusion. So you can actually build a lot of projects without even having to cut this stuff. And you get a lot of connectors as well and um, a key. So um, the way this stuff works is pretty simple. You grab a hex nut and you, uh, I'll take two and then you slide them in. And they kind of slide perfectly if you get them, if you get them at the right angle. And then they're, they're captured inside, so you can see they can slide oh, back and forth, and they're captured. And then um, you take the plate, and then I'm going to have to, you can't see over there, so I have to do this over here, and then I'll bring it back. Um, you put the um, screw over it, and then you can torque it down, and so now it's connected. And then you can take another screw. Oops. And then you're, you should drop your stuff all over the place. Um, that? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll grab another one. I'll just pick that up. You can um, attach another one and um, torque it down. And then you can have um, you know rigid shapes made out of 15 by 15. And then you can attach onto any side because all four sides have um, this slot shape in it. So extrusions usually come in 15, uh, sorry, 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter dimensions or greater. And this is a fairly small 15 by 15 millimeter, which makes it good for uh, small robotics and such. Yeah. And uh, in addition to having it in... Um, Clear coat. We also have it in black and Yeah, we have it in Adafruit black. There's a little hex nut. Yeah, we'll find those later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's keep moving right along. Uh, on the um, other uh, side of things, uh, there's metal and then there's cardboard. cardboard. So these are um, gigantic kinetic creatures. They're really big. As you can see, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're there compared to people. Um, we have elephants and we have giraffes and we have rhinos and uh, they're super cute. They're super cute. They're fun to build. Uh, and they're large. They're Which really, yeah, they're not, really big. They're not like teeny little folding things. They're like they're big enough that they're actually 
toys. Like the giraffe one is really big. Yeah, and uh, one of the cool things is we also got the motor kit yeah. that uh, propels them. So I wanted to show uh, two quick videos. One is what they are, and then two, uh, someone's already done a cool hack with a motion sensor. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm sorry, proximity. Uh, well, yeah, it's a proximity sensor. I think it's to Arduino, but there's actually yeah. like, no real information. Yeah, but anyways, yeah. Uh, on to the Let's video. So here's the video of these little creatures. Kinetic creatures are walking cardboard animals that you build from a tab and slot kit. There's Ellie, Rory, and Gino. Each creature takes a complex mechanical linkage and makes it accessible through an easy assembly and a charismatic form. The kinetic creatures come alive with a simple mechanical movement. They can also walk on their own with a gear kit. The insides are an open platform for your own inventions too, with Lego, Arduino, and more. This is our gear assembly which you can build from a kit. When you receive your kinetic creature, all of the building instructions will be on our website where we'll walk you through the process of building your animal step by step. Kinetic Creatures encourages people to build and share, and we want to get them into your hands and into the hands of makers, builders, and art students. Thanks so much. Okay. That's so why they're, they're cardboard, so you can, you can draw on them. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah, you can draw on paint on them, add LEDs, do all sorts of yeah. cool stuff. They're really big, they're really beautiful. Uh, a uh, cool couple that makes them um, out in Washington. And then uh, here's a neat thing that someone did with uh, a computer with these. So check that out. Project to do with a micro, like having it standalone, because yeah. if it was light enough and small enough, you could tuck it in there. Yeah. And then the sensor would just detect when there's a hand and it would walk towards it. That would be so cool. <laughs> so we have some Raspberry Pi related uh, products. So we put them in the section here. Uh, we've got uh, this header. Yeah. About this? Yeah, sure. Um, so this is a special custom header that we actually <laughs> have, and I'll show it with the, um, the LCD tube. So um, we made this LCD plate, which I'll be showing later. And uh, this plugs into the Raspberry Pi, but the problem is, is that this only uses two pins, but it takes up, you know, the entire header is connected, so what are you going to do? Um, well, with this extra long um, connector, you see it's, first off, it's extra tall, because you need that for um, the Pi, and then the pins are extra long as well, and so even when you have this installed, you can take, um, like, a, a GPIO cable or your cobbler, and um, you can just plug it in. Hold on, let me line up the, the pins. I'm always off by one. Um, so you can plug that in, and okay. then you can connect without having to uh, do any kind of funky wiring. And you can also, if you have a, a proto plate, you can stack that underneath as well. Yeah. So, a okay. fun little, little part, yeah. single part, but super, also. Super handy, super yeah. useful. Um, next up, we've got these great. Uh, Board holders, I guess. Yeah, that. I don't know. These are like board board edge holders. I'll show these yeah. on the, the dish actually, because um, they're they're white, so they're kind of hard to show. So if you see here, I'm gripping onto um, this Raspberry Pi um, with these little um, white little nylon pieces, and on the back there's these screws, and then um, there's this number six thread forming screws. Um, you have to get thread forming screws. You have to have these plastic bitey screws to really bite into them. And um, on the nylon bit, there's this kind of round hook. It's kind of a strange shape, but it's designed so that you can grip it from the edge or from a corner. And it um, takes up very little space, so you don't have to worry about it running into any components um, and, and shearing them off, um, as long as you just pick a spot that has, you know, yeah. like a 
couple millimeters of space. Yeah. So the Raspberry Pi doesn't have any mounting holes, but this yeah. allows you to. Yeah. Uh, well, to the, the, the new ones have mounting holes, but there's like, there's hundreds of thousands of people yeah. with the older ones, so that's great. Um, can this do other type of circuit boards besides the Raspberry Pi? It can Pi? do any circuit board that has a standard um, one sixteenth of an inch thickness. Oh, that's very handy. Yeah. Any any circuit board, and people were asking us about. They come in a pack of four. Um, and you get the, uh, the the screws as well because you do need these special screws. Yeah. Um, and then you just drill a hole and then you can attach anything, which is kind of fun. Yeah. I think this is uh, going to be extremely useful for tons of things for people yeah. that are doing electronics and they need to mount a board. To Sometimes something. you just don't have um, mounting holes on a board or you yeah. design something you forget to and you still need to attach it. Yeah. This, this provides you a solution. Okay. We have, uh, look, at all the, look at this. We have these beautiful RGB LCD keypad. Um, Pipe Pi plates. Pipe plates. And uh, I just wanted to show some of the photos. Um, they're gorgeous. And this is uh, going to be a lot of fun. So this plugs right into a Raspberry Pi. And we're going to do a demo in a second, but look at that. I think a lot of photos. Pi plate with keypad. So do you want to show this on the... Sure. Uh, want to do a demo? Hey, okay. So yeah, you just saw this. Um, so this is the, uh, mm -hmm. the one I built. Hold on, let me just get this nice and centered. Um, so yeah, I have this connected and I have uh, some code running on it. I have this example code from the library. And um, I have it so that there's these five buttons down here. You can press these buttons and they will change um, the backlight to be, uh, you know, red, green, blue, purple, or white. Um, and this is the, the RGB negative. Uh, here's the contrast pot. Here is the uh, I squared C um, converter. So this plate um, allows you to control the character LCDs. These are really popular and because they're so bright and they're easy to use. And um, you just display any message you want on them. Um, but it only takes two pins instead of requiring like the, you know, eight, nine pins that you would normally require for one of these LCDs. And there's not a lot of GPIO available um, on the Pi. So we made one of these for the Arduino and, and it was so popular we thought, well, we would make one for the Pi as well. So that's kind of neat. So um, we have some code for this for Python. And uh, yeah, you can turn this into uh, you know a project that alerts you, or uh, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. Lets okay. you know when there's something going on. All right. Uh, someone wants to know: Will this work with the micro? This one is just for the Pi. Yeah. Um, we do have an Arduino version, and uh, you should use that. There's some extra components required for the Arduino. Are there any ESD issues using acrylic slab for the boards? It's really dry in Colorado. Um. For the. I think holders? for the, the holders, yeah. Uh, the holders, they stand off the board. It doesn't touch acrylic. Ah, okay. That's great. All right. And then we have a uh, new product. Oh, it's so updated. Yeah, updated, updated product. product. This is the version 2 of the um, uh, thermocouple amplifier. We just added some ferrites on there and a capacitor to um, make it a little more stable. Uh, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't in the data sheet, but it was in the app note. So yeah. always read the app note as well as the data sheet because like, tucked in the end there, they're like, oh, don't forget, you should probably put ferrites on there. Um, so this will help people get uh, better stability readings. Yeah. And what type of uh, platforms do people use this for? Um, this, we have code for Arduino, but you can use any microcontroller. It's a simple SPI output, just needs a couple digital pins, and it's a 5-volt compatible, 3-volt compatible, so you can use either 5 or 3 volts. Uh, logic and power for this, and uh, it's good for any K-thermocouple. Okay. K-type thermocouple. That's great. Not to be confused with K-Town. And for, for people who don't even know what a thermocouple is, when would you use that? A thermocouple is used often for high temperature readings because um, we do have like temperature sensors that are good for you know, up to boiling, um, like 100 degrees C or so. Um, these are good for you know 1,000 degrees C. The k okay. thermocouples are, are for use up to 1,000 degrees uh, centigrade. Okay. So they're very um, rugged uh, sensors. Yeah. We have so one. So if you had a, a reflow oven, would you? Yeah, if you have like a reflow that? oven, yeah. or some people use them for smokers. Mm -hmm. um, some people use them for kilns. They make yeah. a kiln. Uh, they're doing metal work. Um, you know, these these sensors can put up with a lot of abuse. I mean, we have k couples in the store that I think are good up to 650. Yeah. Uh, if you want more than 60, 650 <laughs> degrees centigrade, you have to you do have to get a, the expensive, more expensive thermocouples that are that are physically designed to withstand uh, the temperatures without getting damaged. But um, the the sensor itself, uh, can, they can often get up to a thousand. Okay, that was uh, new products. And down to like negative 500. Boom. Yeah, Done. lots of new.